What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Hangout Spot, where you already know it's real talk, sports talk, live from my man cave. It's your boy, Johnny. Let's talk about yesterday's game because there's just a few things that I need to get off my chest. I was going to do a post-game video yesterday, but I was so upset that I didn't want to come across as negative. I didn't want to curse. <laughs> but I was just pissed. And trust me when I tell you, I'm not pissed. I wasn't pissed because the Jets lost because I picked the Jets to lose. There's no way I thought that they would beat the Browns. But what I saw yesterday just pissed me off. Because it was just weeks, of, a culmination of weeks of inept bullshit coaching. I mean, what are we doing here, man? What are we doing here? Yesterday was perfectly clear to me. And you know what? It was clear to me a few weeks ago. But it just, it, I don't know. Yesterday was just, like I said, it was just a culmination of things that I saw that just led me to believe that I can't understand for the life of me how we are bringing back this piss poor coaching staff starting with Robert Sala. I, I just, I can't figure that out. I really can't. I mean, I know I, I said on videos prior a few weeks ago that, you know, Joe Douglas needs to be held accountable for what's going on with this team. You know, for not getting us a veteran backup quarterback, for not addressing all the deficiencies on the offensive line. And trust me when I tell you, he, he, he does need to be held accountable for that aspect. But at the end of the day, I was thinking to myself, you know, I slept on it. And I was thinking to myself, realistically, had he had even gotten us a veteran quarterback, had he had gotten us some offensive line help, some adequate offensive line help, with this coaching staff, would it have been any different? And I'm thinking to myself, and I'm like, no. We would have been in the same exact position right now because look at who our head coach is. Robert Sala is an absolute clown. He really is. And for all the people that claim that, you know what, as, 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 as bad as we've gotten hit with injuries and all the bad luck that we've had this year, at least the team plays for Sala. They play hard for him. Well, guess what? Did you watch yesterday's game? Because it seemed to me that this team quit. Defensively, they were terrible. Missed tackles. Couldn't stop the run against a team that has also been decimated on the offensive line. The tight end was wide open the entire first half. He's probably still running wide open right now a day later. Are you serious? And this is supposed to be a defense that is considered a championship caliber defense? Well, if they didn't quit, they look, they look severely, severely unprepared to play yesterday. And that, my friends, falls on the head coach. That was just a horror show. A dinosaur quarterback who was on our roster last year. Six weeks ago, he's sitting on his sofa. Cleveland pulls him in. Their fourth quarterback, mind you. And he goes out there, and he does nothing but win. And against us, he looks like Joe Montana and Lamar Jackson put together. We couldn't stop him. And this is a team that didn't even have their best receiver playing. Armani Cooper wasn't playing, but you knew what was going to happen. You knew Elijah Moore was going to step in there and embarrass us. And for the most part in the first half, he was well on his way to doing that. In fact, if he doesn't get hurt, and I hope the kid is okay, but if he doesn't get hurt, he probably has about 200 yards receiving and two or three touchdowns against us. He was killing us. What we saw yesterday was absolutely and utterly embarrassing. It was pathetic. I knew it. I hope next year we get no primetime games because we do nothing but embarrass ourselves in national TV in front of the entire world. And you want to bring this coaching staff back. You want to bring this coordinator back. Because Robert Sala was asked about it. He expects the entire coaching staff to be back. Really? You know what's funny to me? Woody Johnson comes out, you know, a week or two or, or a week and a half ago. I don't, I don't, I don't remember when. Through, through social media, through the media, announces that Sala, Joe Douglas, Hackett, they're all coming back. 
which to me is mind boggling. I'm not surprised because I knew right after Aaron Rodgers got hurt and they announced that he was out for the year, I knew that this coaching staff and this GM was going to get a pass for the rest of the year. I knew it. I knew it. Shouldn't have been that way, but I knew they were going to get a pass. But even if you decided to give them a pass after week one, what you've seen this year, as opposed to what other teams are doing around the league with backups, with quarterbacks, with makeshift offensive, offensive lines, still winning games, still trying to, still playing meaningful games in December, with all that you saw that happened throughout the year, your mind is still, yes, we're going to run it back with these guys. You really feel like this is the right staff to be able to run it back? That's, that to me is mind-boggling. And again, this is why the Jets are an inept, embarrassing franchise. That shit starts from up top. Ownership, not making the right decisions to put proper leadership in place to give this team the best chance to win. It starts from up top. When you have a guy who's clueless up top, then he's going to hire a GM that's clueless, who's going to hire a head coach that's clueless, who's going to hire an offensive coordinator who's even more clueless. This is the way it works. It all starts from up top. That's reality. So what you saw, you still feel comfortable. Well, of course they do because they feel like Aaron Rodgers will come right in with the same coaching staff, with the same assemblance of players, with the same bullshit offensive line, and he's just going to magically fix everything and we're going to go 12-5 and five, and we're going to make a run at the Super Bowl next year. Well, guess what? If that's what you think, you're sadly mistaken. Because I firmly believe that whether we have Rodgers this year or not, we'd probably be in the same exact position, not making the playoffs, because this coaching staff is poor, terrible. And the fact that nobody's being held accountable is, is criminal. It really is. Let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers next season. He's gonna be he's 40 years old. He's going to be 41 years old in December. Coming off a of major Achilles injuries injury. We don't even know what type of player he's going to be. Let's be honest. I think all of us, based on track record, future Hall of Famer, we all think that we're getting the MVP Aaron Rodgers. And we better hope we do. But I, I don't know. I'm not convinced. Again, Father Time. Father Time is usually undefeated. Not everybody's going to be Tom Brady. He's going to be able to quarterback to their 45. Let's keep that in mind. So all that said, 41 years old next year, coming off a major injury, do we really think that with this, this team, this coaching staff, that he's just going to mask every single deficiency? He may mask some, but not all. This team, this team has too many issues, too many holes. Let's be honest. And when you have a coaching staff that just can't get backups, to play above their level, to develop them so that they still are a competent team even though they lose starters, you're just not going to win. You're not going to win in this league. And that's why the Jets, it's no secret that the Jets have not made the playoffs for, for, for 13 years because that's all they do. They hire piss-poor GMs and coaches that just can't get the job done. They can't develop quarterbacks. I mean, it's 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 crazy to me. It really is, you know. And then and then and then this clown Salah comes out, right? It's only co coincidentally, right? A couple of days after Woody Johnson says that his job is safe, he comes out in one of his press conferences and he tells the entire world that yeah, yeah, I, I made a lot. I, I I believe that I made mistakes. I could have done different things differently after the Aaron Rodgers injury. Really, you want to come out and say that now? <laughs> no shit. We knew that weeks and weeks and weeks ago. I got five off the top of my head. Five mistakes that this clown made. And he's going to continue to make them. Because even if your job is safe, why don't you be objective and look at the way the offense was ran and say to yourself, you know what? I'm here, but I got to do things differently. I got to mix up. The, I, I got to change this coaching staff because it just what we were doing offensively, regardless of Rodgers being here or not, just didn't work. I need to move in a different direction. But no, he doesn't think that way. Because, again, 
He's another idiot that thinks that Aaron Rodgers is going to come here and fix everything. So you think so now you want to acknowledge the fact that you made mistakes. Your mis your mistakes started right after the Buffalo game. In reality, if you I mean, personally me, I think the first mistake he made after the Buffalo game, when they asked him who was going to be the starter, was Zach be the starter next week? He said, without hesitation, Zach Wilson is our starter for the rest of the season. That, to me, was mistake number one. Why would you name Zach Wilson the starter for the rest of the season? Why? For what purpose? I mean, okay, he played. He, he didn't play great that game. He came in, it was a tough situation, they managed to pull out a victory. But the right answer, the right answer to that question for, for any head coach, any competent head coach who had half a brain was, Zach Wilson is our starter for next week, and then we'll see how it goes week after week. Let the kid earn the starting spot. That's one of the reasons why I feel that Zach Wilson failed here. Because they did everything that they possibly could to make life easy for him, when I think they should have probably made it a little bit more difficult, made it a little bit more challenging. Let him work for his spot like everybody else in the team is required to work for their starting spot. Don't give him anything. I mean, why would you give him the starting starting job? Because, because he had an adequate preseason against second and third stringers? Because he sat behind Aaron Rodgers for two months during training camp and OTAs? He's ready to take the reins? You didn't trust him going into the season to be your quarterback. That's why you went out and got Aaron Rodgers. The right answer, again, would have been... He's starting next week. We'll see how it goes. We'll play it week to week. And then if he happens to play well and put together a string of three or four good games and you want to say he's earned that right to be the starter the rest of the way, then then you name him the starter. People may not think it's a big deal, but I do. I think it's a big deal because at the end of the day, the kid needed to prove that he can, that he can quarterback this team. A playoff caliber team coming into the season, especially after last year because play, the, play, the locker room gave up on him. It was evident when they were wearing Mike White t-shirts. And this fool actually allowed it, which tells you a lot about his leadership in the locker room by not addressing that. That was mistake number one to me. I'm sorry. Mistake number two should have been him having the balls to go into Joe Douglas's office and say, listen, we're starting Zach, but I need you for you to get me a, 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 a veteran backup quarterback that I feel comfortable enough can play competent in the event that this kid is ineffective or he gets hurt. Because Tim Boyle is not a good quarterback. We all knew it. They knew it. They all knew it. Robert Sala's actions throughout the season, by not even by not even thinking about pulling Zach out in the middle of a game where he was ineffective, he we they told us through their actions that they knew Tim Boyle was absolute trash. Go in there and challenge your GM and tell him, get me a backup quarterback in here that's going to push Zach Wilson. Or again, if he's not good, somebody we can go to and that still gives us a viable, competent uh, uh, chance to win. Show some balls. Your offensive coordinator was bad. Piss poor bad. You're the head coach. Mistake number three, he should have considered stripping him of his play calling duties. And I know a lot of fans are going to say, well, who are you going to put to call plays? My answer is very simple. Who even cares? Can anybody be any worse than what we saw with Hackett? Try the passing game coordinator, Todd Downey. He has 20-some-odd 20, 20 years of experience. Who knows? Maybe he sees things a little bit differently. Maybe he could put together a different game plan. Maybe his play calling will be a little bit more innovative. A lot more reactive based on what you're seeing, the drive prior. Those are what good offensive coordinators do, right? They adjust the game plan. They play chess, not checkers. Look at what the Bills did. Worked for them. They pulled their offensive coordinator and put in Joe Brady. Their offense took off. He should have had the balls to make that type of change. Because that, that's a statement. That's also a statement. Just like the offensive line coach. He should have had the balls to fire him midseason. Because this offensive line, I know they've been decimated by injuries. I know the deal. I know it's been makeshift and they're moving guys in and out, in and out. But to me, offensive line is more about scheme and execution. And obviously, based on what you see, player development, it's no surprise that we've had offensive linemen on this team the last couple of years that now go to other teams and they play well. 
because they're in a better system, a better scheme, and they're coached better. This guy was bad, period. This offensive line looked historically one of the worst I've ever seen. You make a statement, pull him, put somebody else in there. Those, 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 were, those, are, those were easy moves for him to make if he had a pair. Big one for me, a big mistake, not putting your foot up every player's ass that committed all these stupid penalties throughout the season. This is an undisciplined team, and that starts with coaching. Instead of being their friend, why don't you be their coach? Why don't you coach them hard? One game, nine penalties. Another one, eight penalties. Another one, 12 penalties. Yesterday, 12 penalties, pre-snap penalties, false starts, illegal shifts. Delay of games. What the hell are we doing here? All these weeks later, we're still talking about penalties? What the hell is he doing to address that? He's the coach. The mindset I would have had weeks ago after that 9-10 penalty game, that first one would have been next week, this first player that commits a pre-snap penalty that negates a first down, touchdown, whatever it is, is getting pulled. For half or an entire game, make a statement. That's the only way that you're going to be able to get players to respond. You pull their playing time. You can't take money away from them. They're making millions and millions. So finding them, that's nothing. It's like a slap on the wrist. Take away their playing time. Let them sit Let them sit and think about it on the sideline. Then maybe next time, they'll be a little bit more disciplined, a little bit more focused. But no, this is weeks. And then when he gets asked about it yesterday, well, I got to look into it. Now you got to look into it? What are you looking into it now? For next year? What would you do to fix it this year? This team is the most penalized team in football. 123 penalties. I saw that stat line yesterday. Mind-boggling. That's coaching. It's those, those are the top four, five, whatever I said, that just right off the top of my head. About how he messed up. And I don't see him getting any better. This is three years. You are what your record says you are. You're not going to be able to run that whole thing. Well, we, you know, we walked into a tough situation and we had a lot of young players. This team was ready. This season shouldn't have been the way it was. The Browns prove that you can overcome injuries and still put out a good product, a, a competitive product. There's no team, in my opinion, that got decimated more than the Browns. Their offensive line got hit hard, just like ours. They lost their star running back early in the season. They're on their fourth quarterback, one that they pulled from his sofa five weeks ago. And they have not skipped a beat. Kevin Stefanski, much props. If, if, if the season were over tomorrow, he'd have my vote for coach of the year. Yet this clown, look at us. We're, the, we're an embarrassment. We're the la we're laughing stock of the freaking league. So I can't wait. I can't wait till Joe Douglas and Sala go up there after the season and they do their after season press conference or whatever it is that they, 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 they that they do. I hope the reporters are gonna ask them those tough questions that the answer that, that the, the fans want answers to. I hope so. I really hope so. Our best shot is Connor Hughes and Rich Samini. They're our best shots to get us the answers that we want. Because if they're going to sit there and they're going to say that this injury went down the tubes because uh, this season, I'm sorry, this season went down the tubes because of injuries, that's bullshit. They need to come back and go, what do you tell the fans? What do you tell the fans that will tell you that's a bullshit excuse because look at the Cleveland Browns? Because you know that's what they're going to say. Injuries. This is the NFL. Everybody has injuries. This season shouldn't have been this way. Okay, we lost our starting quarterback, but life goes on. You put another one in there that's capable of doing the job. You plug some holes. You work with the GM. And you make it work. When you have coaches that are playing checkers instead of chess, this is the product that you get. It's just, uh, like I said, I, I just felt like I needed to, to come out and vent a little bit. Because this sucks, you know, for us true Jet fans, to my Jet fan peoples out there who, who are emotionally invested, we put our heart and soul every week cheering for this, this shitty product. We deserve better. We deserve better. We really do. Rather than the, the nonsense that we saw yesterday. Trevor Simeon, pick six. 
missed tackles. We got a couple of turnovers. We did absolutely nothing with them. I mean, it's, I mean except for Jermaine Johnson. Kudos to him. That pick six, that was impressive. That was good to see. You can see this kid is getting better, and he's trying to his his best to put a you know his his good foot forward. And, and for the most part, there are some players on this team that are trying hard. You know the the Brees Halls, the Garrett Wilsons, the Sauce Gardners. They're trying. But I mean, realistically, they got no shot. They got no shot here. Not with this coach. Can't believe it. Can't believe he's coming back. I can't believe there's going to be no changes. Nothing. At first, I thought maybe the offensive line coach would get the uh, the axe and he'd be the scapegoat. Apparently not. At least not what it looks like based on what, what Salah says. But who knows? You can't believe a word he says anyway. Half of the shit that comes out of his mouth is is, is bullshit anyway. I'll tell you, man. Anyway, I <laughs> again, I apologize you know, for, for doing these, these, these are, these videos are not always going to be like this. And trust me when I tell you, it's okay to subscribe. We're going to be doing a lot more positive stuff. In fact, after next week, that's when the real football talk starts. We're going to start talking about the playoffs, playoff predictions. So stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of good content that is coming out. But as always, appreciate you listening. Thanks for watching. This is your boy, Johnny, signing out from the hangout spot. And I'll talk to everybody soon.